For us, it is an honor to have you around here. Our wish is that the secrets of the sages of ancient India, taught by the renowned Yogi Sadguru, be a powerful tool of self-transformation in your inner journey. Get to know our yoga course by clicking on the link that is in the description of this video and learn more. So, I know you're… some of you, uh, many of you, I'm sorry, are doing your practices regularly, regularly others weekends of course. <laughs> or maybe only weekends you're skipping, there are people who do five days and skip on weekends. There are some who do it only on the weekends. Uh, some of course are more aligned with the planetary systems and they do it on full moon and new moon. <laughs> Others just did on first January as a part of the resolution <laughs> It's all right. These are all, all the practices irrespective of what you're doing as yoga, on one aspect, is to bring stillness into you. If you sit here, sitting here is good enough. Nothing need to happen. Sitting here is good enough. Because as long as you're driven by desires, you must understand, desire does not take you towards your destiny. Desire is a way of entangling yourself. If… Uh, if you're conscious and you throw the desire like a yo-yo, play with it and leave it, no problem. But if desire drives you, it is not driving you towards your destiny but towards a disaster. When I say disaster, will something terrible happen? What can be more terrible than you never realize what your life is about? Oh. Okay. The greatest disaster in life is, without tasting the basic nature of your life, you went away. You know you're all going? Yes. Hello? Yes. 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 So, without even tasting life, just licking the peel, you went away. In my opinion, it's a great disaster. You think a disaster means your house should burn, something should happen, you must crash your car, something else terrible should happen. No, nothing happened to you, that's a disaster. Hello? That nothing that is life happened to you, only this is a disaster. So desire is that which drives you in that direction because Desire is a distraction, it'll keep you busy. You throw on desire, I want to build a house. It'll keep you busy for next five years. You got it. Then I must pay up the loan, keeps you busy for thirty-five years. <laughs> I want to get married, it kept you busy for one or two years. You got married, then <laughs> I'm not saying anything negative about marriage. It's about the way you're handling it. Then you become a householder. Are you, why are you holding the house? <laughs> if you're holding your husband and wife, it's okay with me. You're holding the house, you live in the house because human body is made like this, it needs some protection and temperature control, huh? You can't just sleep, lie down here. You have… you need a building. But why are you a householder? Oh. You know in the office there are paper holders and file holders. <laughs> You're a householder. Oh, that's a terrible thing to become. That is the greatest disaster that can happen to anybody that you are a householder. You're living in a house, wonderful. But you're a householder, that's a terrible thing. Like this, 
Desire leads you to the disaster because it diverts you from what really matters for this life. It keeps you on the surface, never allowing you to bite into the fruit, just licking the peel all the time. And as long as you don't eat the fruit, the desire will be on. This is the best thing about it. <laughs> you know these dog races, have you seen? I think in United States there are dog races. So there is a big bone being dragged in the front. If the bone gets to the dog, the dog won't race. <laughs> desire is just like this, always. If you get it, <laughs> over. Have you seen so many desires have been fulfilled? The moment it's fulfilled, it's no good. Yes or no? Yes. Only when it's unfulfilled, it's a tremendous thing. Once it's fulfilled, it's no good. So, if I tell you become desireless, that would be a negative statement. Somebody else said that and he's been misinterpreted in a thousand different ways. So I won't make that mistake. Just sit here, simply. No, but Sadhguru, my mind, uh, it's all right. Uh, my mind… my mind is thinking, Sadhguru, too many thoughts. Are you never told me, Sadhguru, my… when I meditate, my liver is working, Sadhguru, what to do? My kidney is also working, Sadhguru. You never complained. Hello? <laughs> you never complain, Sadhguru, when I'm meditating, my heart is beating, what to do, how to stop it? <laughs> no, only your brain you want to stop. Well, that's because you're overly identified with the activity of the brain, overly. You're not so identified with the liver unless it troubles you. Yes or no? You don't even know where your kidney is <laughs> till it gives you trouble. And the, if you say, doctor says, let me feel your kidney, you'll say this, this, this. <laughs> then he says, okay, <laughs> because you don't even know where it is. <laughs> but you're too identified with the activity of the brain and this activity runs. You throw a stone there, run up to it. You throw a stone there, run up to it. It is this kind of game. This happened. One day Shankaran Pillai bought a very expensive watch, hey? <laughs> He bought a very, very expensive watch and took it to a doctor's office and then gifted it to the doctor. Doctor, this is a gift for you. The doctor was surprised, why such an expensive gift? What for? No, you treated my uncle, Mr. Dobson, and I'm very, very grateful to you, so this gift. Then the doctor was taken aback, but Mr. Dobson died. <laughs> yes, doctor, that's why. <laughs> I inherited his whole property. <laughs> so, this is the nature of the desire. Once you put it out there, you can't control it, it just goes all over. You have to become conscious. If your desires are conscious to fulfill certain things for yourself and people around you, perfectly fine. But you must know your thought, your emotion, your desiring, everything comes from you, not the other way around. You are not shaped because of your thoughts and emotions. You are not shaped because of your desires and goals that you have set, all these have been set by you. If this much comes, you will tend to become still. If you become very still in every way, then easy to crack the egg. When is the hatching, tell me? Now, now, then I'll end up with so many chicks. I heard there is… there's a pile of questions that people have held back for the last few months, <laughs> so please.
Namaskaram Sadhguru. This is the most popular question, both online and in person. How are you doing? How are you feeling? How have you been? They want to know everything. What, what about the popularity of the question? What's that? This, this is the most popular question, both online and in person. Oh. They want to know everything about how you have been over the last few months. Oh. The result seems to be good. Well, uh, I, uh, I made myself like this. Physically it's been painful, but uh, I made myself like this that nothing really puts me down that way. So all that's happened is uh, in the last few months, uh, because of certain things that happened and certain things that I said and did, whatever at that time, a whole hospital full of people, doctors, nurses, staff, everybody have become huge followers. <laughs> and. Uh, Well, physically it's been tough, of course, but I didn't make it tough for myself, though. Uh, there are moments where people thought, the doctors thought uh, they lost me, but here I am. Not easy to kill me <laughs> Well, a few reckless things we did, of course, nobody to blame. But we've always been doing this. This became too much of a public spectacle. Always I've been doing such things, throwing my life out here and there and risking it. This time unfortunately it became too much of a public spectacle where uh, just about everybody knows <laughs> which is embarrassing of course. And uh, let me tell you the good part of it. Probably continuously for four or five months, I'm eating on time. <laughs> it never happened to me since I was probably eighteen, twenty years of age. Since then, I've been a hungry cat always because I don't plan my day around the food. I know a lot of people when they're having breakfast, they plan their lunch, when they're having lunch, they have planned their dinner. <laughs> um, but I don't plan my life around where is food, I'm just doing what I want to do. So sometimes food comes, sometimes it doesn't come, though in the last few years people strive to make sure that I have something. When those people who are not there earlier, it did not come, but it never mattered, but I saw it's quite nice to eat on time, <laughs> every day. Oh, it's not happened to me at a stretch like this for a very, very long time, forty years plus. What forty? More than that, nearly fifty years. So another thing, because of certain medication and stuff which is all off now, uh, Well, uh, they made me a bit drowsy and uh, when I asked some of the experts, what's the best thing to do? Now that they opened up a window in my head, I don't know how much of brain they've taken off, you should tell me how much is gone <laughs> So, uh, when we asked them, they said, Sadhguru, there's only one treatment, sleep, sleep and sleep. So, morning I woke up, walked, 
ate something, slept, again woke up, walked, ate something, slept, again evening walked, ate something, walked and slept. <laughs> Ideal life. Well, there were a couple of books to work upon and I've been looking at that. But uh, otherwise, many, many people around me, both here and in India, are putting their lives to make sure everything happens, right? And uh, <laughs> people like me when I'm little helpless, you know. Right from my daughter to everybody, no, this is the way you do it, you must… you must sleep now. But what? When did you become the boss <laughs> So, <laughs> well, uh, and uh, rest of the things that are happening in the foundation, I see the better happening better without me. So it's good and uh, well, uh, it's just a uh, little went out of control, otherwise I would have been here on 17th of March and I was keeping a month free so that I fix myself without any surgery or anything. But it got a little delayed too many. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing, it went out of control. So, uh, <laughs> they say, the English say, all is well that when ends well or something like that. So, here we are. I didn't know it was such a popular course. Very close, almost crossed. But, uh, well, uh, of course, in terms of the foundation, in terms of various things that we are doing, it would have been a hit in case I went over. As far as I am concerned and the core part of my work is concerned, no difference. Here also I am in Shiva's lap, there also I am in Shiva's lap. Here also I do the same thing, there also I do the same thing. So in that context, there is no difference. Spiritually, there wouldn't be difference either for me or for you. But other things, the golf course, they may not shape it well <laughs> I'm concerned about that. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Why are you? I'm okay. here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sadhguru, you have given us this incredible space. It's so wonderful in this glorious evening for thousands of us to come here and really immerse ourselves here. Um, and given your vision for the yogic city, which seems to us that it's a unique opportunity here in North America, would you spend more time here with us? I also have another question. Oh, one, we'll answer one. <laughs> what is the other question? Okay. <laughs> so, as, as a regular person um, oh. with family what and What do you work, mean, regular person? <laughs> You're referring to me as irregular or <laughs> <laughs> What is a regular person? <laughs> regular bullshit, is it? Yes, something like that, Sadhguru. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please tell us. So, <laughs> as a regular person with family and work, how can I make use of uh, the yogic city, this vision that you're creating, and how can we support and be a part of this vision? Oh, 
Essentially, uh, when we envision this, we envision this only for regular human beings <laughs> We were not thinking of opening a mental asylum <laughs> for those who gone a little irregular. <laughs> we were thinking only of regular people. I'm glad you are a regular one. If your idea of being regular is that you're mortgaged to a bank or an insurance company or something else, well, that's not my idea of being regular. If you think regular means you have thirty-five years house loan, ten-year car loan, fifteen-year student loan and still it's going on after forty years, you're not regular, you have no sense of life. You're planning your life you're he like you're here for a thousand years. Are you thousand-year lifespan girl? Huh? That girl is thousand years? <laughs> no. But you're planning your life like you're going to be here for a thousand years. Effective life, I'm saying. If you live very healthy and well, effective life is seventy-five, eighty years of age. After that, you rocking chairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the greatest excitement you can have. So, in eighty years, twenty years went in preparation, education, growth, physical body, mental body, everything, all that over. So essentially for approximately fifty years that you live, for fifty years, you have a forty-five year mortgage. You are not regular. You are not a regular person. You got something irregular has happened in your head. What do you think? <laughs> so, uh, Change that description of yourself, if you have that kind of arrangement in life, you say, for an irregular person like me, who lives here for approximately fifty, fifty-five years of adult life, in that I have a plan of loans for fifty, sixty years, you must start the question like that, I'm an irregular person, I'm not regular. Hello? Yes or no? If you're regular, you'll plan according to the time and energy that you have, isn't it? Anyway, about the yogic city, already I have a reputation, don't ask him a question, he will destroy you. <laughs> no, I'm only destroying the question, not you. <laughs> I don't intend to destroy you, but you ask a stupid question and it must be destroyed. But normally you used to, if you ask a stupid question, mo, 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 come baby, no, no, no. <laughs> we'll give you a hug and everything will be okay with you. So, uh, hey, what are this? You're reaching for the sky? No, no, okay. Usually to touch the sky you need something more than two hands. So, what is this about? Why we procured a land in such a… in general terms, a remote place? Just imagine, if we had ten, twenty acres around Atlanta or even Nashville or any other city for that matter, it, by now it would have been immense, you know. Why this hardship of procuring a remote wild land somewhere like this and all these nutcases over here as uh, full-time volunteers <laughs> who are working their lives out for last fifteen, sixteen years to make it look like what it is today. Many of them very young people, wearing their lives out to see that it happens. Similarly, it's been done in India. 
Many of them came when they were eighteen, nineteen, today they're in their fifties. And they're still running around the same way, still doing things, but they've created a place which has become a, a destination in the country today, in India <laughs> and in many ways to the world. Well, why this dedication, why this effort to create this? Is this about real estate? I'm not interested in real estate. I've said this many, many times, my real estate is in the minds and hearts of people, not in buildings and land. <laughs> this land, buildings, this physical real estate is a big nuisance. How many things to manage on a daily basis, you know? You just have one apartment or one home or whatever you have, how many things to manage? Yes or no? When you have twenty thousand acres and so many things coming up, how many things to manage on a daily basis? And above all, I want you to understand both in India and here, we are doing this without political power and without any great financial resource. Never use political power because with that comes various things and I can't take it. <laughs> After I go, maybe they'll bring the politicians in, I don't know. Because without them, everything is hardship. Without political power, everything is hardship. Though no, we know everybody in India, we don't bring them in. We don't bring them on stage to do something. We don't honor them with this and that. We don't allow them to dictate things to us. Both political people and the rich and famous of the society, because of that, everything becomes doubly hard. Essentially because of me, it becomes hard on everybody. But it is because of that, we've maintained a, a strain of spiritual process which is unaffected by any social things that are happening around us. And this is very important for today, for tomorrow, for future. This is very important. There is a clean spiritual process which is unaffected by political forces, social forces, financial forces around us because they will always creep in. We have taken a lot of care to keep them away. Once you keep them away, you don't have key support. Without that, to do this is real slavery. So all the volunteers, both in India and here, full-time, part-time, all sorts, have done a lot to make these places available. And then comes consecrations and make the powerful energy spaces, which takes a lot of life. All this, why? See, a space like this, like for example, I'm just taking an extreme example. When the pandemic struck in 2020, well, people, once it's over, people can say, oh, nothing happened to me, it was all a fake thing, it was just a news media. But well, nearly fourteen, twelve to fourteen million people died, that's not media. We have seen hundreds and hundreds of bodies burning on a daily basis in India, in the cremation grounds. That is not media, all right? No, no, but the virus is fake, I don't know, maybe a f f damn fake, fake virus killed everybody. <laughs> but it killed, yes or no? Whether it's fake, real, somebody manufactured it, it fell from the sky or grows from the earth, I don't care how, but people died and people suffered immensely. I don't know if you have seen somebody who is under the COVID attack, it's horrible. It's not an easy death. It's not simply dying like heart attack or something. It's a terrible death, we have seen that. Anybody who says all this was fake, well, I'm glad and you're fortunate that you're alive, it didn't happen to you. We're happy about that, but don't be so, you know, insensitive for all the people who died and all the people who lost those who were dear to them. Who did it, what, that is all political stuff. But as a human being, you saw people falling dead like insects all around you. Happened or no? 
So somebody is pulling out statistics and saying, no, 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 every year that many people die. This year they just made it up, it's COVID. <laughs> what are you talking? <laughs> So you can always create these kind of images, but when that happened, you must understand, both in the Isha Yoga Center in India and here, here there was not so much activity, we contained everything because it was not such a large group and there was nothing much to do in the local society, but there we were engaged in a big way. Every day we served meals for over sixteen thousand people, every day. and. Uh, our volunteers had to go out, dormitories and volunteers had to go out, procure food, serve food, cook food, serve food, all this, a whole lot of effort. But in all this, we didn't have a single fatality. Neither here nor there. Why is this important? Because <laughs> I don't know on what basis, I have no understanding of this. But some scientists are predicting by 2027 there will be another pandemic which may take eight to twelve percent of the population. I don't know. On what basis they make this prediction? Maybe it's a plan. So whichever way it is, the question is not how it happens, where it happens. And it is… it is not even a question whether it happens or not but to create spaces which are physically, mentally healthy for people is most important. But the purpose of this is not just physical, mental health. The purpose of this is… It is a… because we've been talking about eggs, let's say it's a kind of an incubator where things will hatch fast. Especially if you have children, they must grow up here, I'm telling you. <clears throat> now, what is it? What are we going to create? One simple thing, um, I'm just taking something that you can see. Today if you go around in the neighborhood or in Nashville or in Atlanta or worse if you go west all the way, there is not a single city or a town where at least, at least, I'm being very fair, at least seventy percent of the people are nursing a drink at this time of the day. Yes or no? Those who graduated into higher things, of course, they're in those things, I'll not go that far, at least seventy percent. Am I correct on the percentage? Evening only, not… they're not drunk in the day, they're working evening only, at least seventy percent. What's wrong with that? For me, these things are not a morality. It's like this, intoxication means… Intoxicare in Latin means poison. Toxican in Greek means poison, Toxon means arrow because it was referred to as the poison arrow. So essentially, intoxication means… you know what's toxic? Hello? Poisonous, intoxic. So intoxication is a way of poisoning your life. But take it in mild doses so that you don't die. Well, if that's a choice you've made, it's fine. We consume poison only because in some way we want to invite death. Whether fully, maybe we don't have the courage to fully go there, so we just want to… little bit of death. So, just to create a society where there is no intoxication, not because drink and drug has been banished, but because people are beyond that is a tremendous thing in the world, just know this. Not because you will go to hell if you drink, not because your liver will rot, 
simply because you're beyond that. That is not a small thing. That means you fundally, fundamentally have begun to appreciate the value of life. Only if you immensely value life is enlightenment even a possibility. If you value death, well, people have been selling this to you for a long time, if you die you will go to a better place. I don't know why you're not gone yet. <laughs> See, if people know that when they die, they will go to a better place than this, they should be gone before I come there. Because even there I may take up twenty thousand acres <laughs> Please, if you think there's a better place, you must be gone well before me. But if you understand that if we don't create it, there shall be no heaven, first within you, then around you. <clears throat> to create a society, to create a group of people, we don't want to create a completely separate world. I don't believe in creating a parallel world. We'll always be part of the world, but a beauty spot on the planet, <laughs> where people can live without intoxication, can be drunk without intoxication, can be stoned without stones <laughs> and exuberantly alive even if tomorrow they're dying. This is the way of life. When uh, I was just about to go into my first surgery, you know I went through two in two months because of whatever <laughs> So I'm lying down on the table and they're working on me for my anesthesia. All these doctors, nurses, they've… many of them been following me before and these are all young nurses and they're all around me. Actually they need only one or two but about eight are around me <laughs> and uh, they're grinning at me, Sadhguru <laughs> Then they're just poking me for anesthesia, I know in another two minutes or three minutes I'll be gone. So I said, when I come awake, don't smile like this <laughs> because then I will think I'm on the other side <laughs> So the doctor came in and said, what happened, what happened? They were all laughing loudly. For him, if they laugh loudly, all these germs or whatever will fly all over in the air. What is this happening? <laughs> He's coming and screaming at them <laughs> But by then I was drowsy. I won't tell him, even if you scream, it'll all come out <laughs> But what I'm saying is, to create individual human beings who are beyond intoxication, they've not given up because of morality, they've not given up because of their rotting liver, they have not given up because it will take them to hell. They're just beyond that. They are very well without any need for such things. This is an important human being in the coming years, believe me. Because it is already true that almost every one of us are on some kind of chemical because to grow food, we are using chemicals. Nourishment means chemical today. Apart from that, maybe we are taking some supplements or medicines, which is again chemicals. If you breathe, you breathe chemicals. It's better here. If you drink water, you drink with chemicals. You put poison literally. Hello? Chlorine is poison? No? So you drink poison, you eat poison. If you want to be peaceful, you need <laughs> chemical. Mr. Jack Daniel has to visit you <laughs> If you want to be joyful, another kind. If you want to be ecstatic, another kind. Now there's a whole talk going on in social spheres and also in the social media 
Lot of young people, not even in their… they're not terminally ill or something. They're all saying how you should procure your dosage of fentanyl and keep it. When time to come, go comes, this is the most pleasant way to die. Inject yourself with this and you will go without any trouble. They're planning this at when they're thirty, forty. Well, uh, if they had that much brains, they should have planned how to live without anything. Hello? Without disease, without poison, without something, how to just exit? No, that much application to life is not there, that much appreciation of life is not there. Because those who are consciously poisoning themselves or slow poisoning themselves, Obviously, they don't have enough appreciation for life because poison means invitation to death. Am I exaggerating? What, Sadhguru, we can't even have a drink in the evening <laughs> You can have whatever you want. I'm saying we are seeing how to create an atmosphere where people are beyond intoxication, beyond alcohol, drugs, beyond anger, jealousy, hatred, all kinds of things which are poisoning your life on a daily basis. How much poison? If you're angry, are you poisoning yourself or no? Today we can medically prove all these negative emotions that you create are literally poisoning you. Literally, we can check and show you your bloodstream has changed in a certain way. So to come to a more conscious living, Oh, we would like to make the whole planet like this, but as I said, I have been working without political power and financial resource. Without this, this is how much we can do. Hope many more like this will come all over, but this will be extremely important. In another thirty to forty years' time, this will become one of the most important places in this country and in the world. Watch this. But to create that, still there are a lot of things to happen, so what can we do? One thing is stop coming here once in six months. <laughs> Start planning your life in a better way. When I say in a better way, see you must first of all understand life is a… continuously I'm reminding every opportunity I get, I'm saying you are mortal, you're going to die, you're going to die, you don't… I'm not wishing you death. I'm just reminding you, because if you don't understand that, one day <laughs> with deep worries on your head what to cook for tomorrow breakfast, you'll die <laughs> Don't do that. It's good to… it's important to have a good breakfast, but how to pay my student loan? In that you should not die, this is horrible. But I think they're promising now they'll take off your student loan <laughs> Maybe one thing will go but you will anyway pile up other loans, hello? So I'm saying your life should not go like that with concerns. See, people are thinking concerns and worries and anxieties are normal. It's not normal. It is that regular life girl. It's very irregular for any human being to be every day concerned about money, every day concerned about survival, every day how to pay my bill, every day how to survive. This is a most irregular life, this is not a regular life. If you have any sense in your head, these concerns you must settle at least by the time you are thirty-five. How to earn my bread for the rest of my life? I want little more cream. Forty, you should be done. Sixty, seventy, you're still concerned about the same damn thing. This is because you're throwing out desires which are tangling you up all your life, but you don't seem to understand. Till the last day you want to be tangled because you're afraid you may die without a purpose. Anyway, you will die without a purpose, just know this. 
because you were born without a purpose. Hello? No, no, Sadhguru, what about the God-given purpose? Oh. If you believe you are the direct, first-hand, handy work of God, I'm disappointed with him. You and me are just tiny little creatures in this vast cosmos, which seem to be beginning less and endless. In this, we are a tiny little speck and you want a, a purpose of your own. The purpose of life is life. All life is only longing to become full-fledged, that's all. This life also is not longing for anything else, it wants to become full-fledged. But somebody messes you up early on and say, unless you earn money, you are not full-fledged. Nobody told you how much. The whole life goes in that. <laughs> if your parents told you, if you earn ten dollars, you are… you are full-fledged, you would have settled it. Hundred, one million, we would have settled it. They didn't tell you, you must earn enough money, they said. <laughs> enough, when is enough? Even those who are on the verge of becoming trillionaires, they feel it's not enough. So, they set you on this chase, enough, till enough happens, you must be working hard. You must understand, this life is not about work. This work is about life. Because too many people on the planet have forgotten the preeminence of life and they think something else is life. My home is life, my family is life, my work is life, my car is life, my dog is life. No, this is life. I'm not saying this body. This body is also here only to serve life, only to protect life, but there is life here to bring that to its fullest is all there is. This is not a purpose invented by me. Every life is longing for it, you can clearly see. If you plant a seed, it is wanting to become a tree and bear fruit and flowers and fruit and everything. This is its longing to become full-fledged life. A worm, insect, human being, everybody is longing to become full-fledged. Only problem with a human being is, they know how much is full-fledged. If a cockroach grows… Am I using a bad example? No, if a butterfly <laughs> A cockroach is nice because it survived for so long, I believe. If a cockroach grows to two and a half inches, it knows it is full-fledged, nothing more to do. But once you come as a human being, how much is full, you don't know. This is why the struggle. How much is actually a full human being? Shouldn't you look at it? Shouldn't you look at it? How much will be actually a full human being? You should. This is why the space. First thing is to see what it means to be full. Full means with human being, the first basic parameter you need to set is that you are not anti-life. When I say anti-life, when you are angry, you for life or ang against life. When you are miserable, are you for life or against life? When you start hanging yourself to the ceiling, are you for life or against life? When you start poisoning yourself, either slow or full on, are you for life or against life? Yes. This is all. Just see on a daily basis from morning to evening, how many times you have turned against yourself. Forget about other people, just this life, 
how many times are you poking it? So, we want to create a space where there is no need for you to poke yourself. This doesn't mean this is the best place in the universe. No, we can create the best possible place. There is no the best place. That only religious people can promise to you. But their descriptions if you look at it, what is there in heaven? Doesn't look like even an attractive place to me to go. Hmm? You looking for seventy-two? <laughs> huh? No. Doesn't seem attractive for most people unless you are in a certain framework of mind. Rivers flow with wine. You want to drown in wine? You drank a little bit, that itself I am telling you, you're poisoning yourself. Now you want to drown in a river of wine. No, no, you must understand, life is a collective thing but an individual expression. But if you do not find that individual expression, you will never know the rooting of life into everything. Right now a swan is gliding smoothly across the water. You will praise the swan. You don't understand, it's the buoyancy of the water which makes the swan glide like that. A glorious flight of the eagle, you will think it's so fantastic, the eagle. It is the invisible air which is giving it a lift. Hello? Similarly, you may have full of muscles like this, you may be beautiful either because of <laughs> for whatever reasons. But essentially all this is good because there is life throbbing. Huh? If you pull out this one life, how beautiful will you look? How strong will you look? Of course you'll be stiff. Nothing matters, isn't it? That's the only thing that you have. That is the only thing, that's the only value in the existence is life. When I say life, you're thinking life, my office, my family, my dog, my… No, these are all accessories of life. Do not misunderstand the accessories of life, of home, family, work, this, that, body, psychological framework, these are all accessories of life for life to find expression. Do not misunderstand the accessories as life. This is called maya. Once you are lost in this, once you are entangled in this, it'll go on and everybody around you will support it and encourage it. In case you're not getting entangled, they will make sure you're entangled. Oh, you have a mother or a mother-in-law at home, she's telling you, what, you have only one child? You must have at least another three. <laughs> because uh, they want to make sure you're… they're all conditioned as agents of entanglement. <laughs> they have no bad intentions against you. That's how they understand life. That's all they have known and that's all they wish for everybody. You just turn around and ask your mother or mother-in-law or father or every… anybody, okay, you're asking me to do all this. You've done all this. Are you bursting with joy? You don't even have to ask that question. Look at their face and you know <laughs> You look at their face and you know, isn't it? Question is not needed. Why simply embarrass them? Because they have lived within their limitations, they have done their best for you, we appreciate that. I in gratitude will look at them. If it's possible to help them, we can, but if they are beyond help, but you. Once you know there is something beyond your physical nature, once you know there is something beyond just physical aspects of life, if you don't wake up to it, if you don't plan your life around it, then life will have its ways. This is not my wish, 
but it's like that. You had a glimpse, but you didn't go for it. Then system will work in a certain way. For most of you, through these simple processes like bhava, spandana, samyama, you had a glimpse. At that time you thought, Sadhguru, this is it, I'm full on, I'm coming. Now you're coming in once in six months, now you're asking, what is the purpose of Sadhguru, all this city, <laughs> yogic city you're creating <laughs> Because I thought if the glimpse has ignited you, we want to make the real show full on for you in your life, that you live it, you live that way. So anyway, for those of you and of course children are coming and also to attract various other people, you know a golf course is coming up, it's a fine course, eighteen all course, it'll be very good, designed by me. <laughs> you better learn to hit a ball at least, man, <laughs> sitting ball, all right? And uh, at least nearly three hundred fifty to three hundred seventy homes will come around that. If you want to have… even if you don't play, you want to have a view of the golf course and wait for a ball to come and hit in your third eye. <laughs> hey, it can happen in so many ways. When somebody shanks the ball, it can come and tch. We don't know in which way it'll come, we must be open to everything, you know. And there is a school coming up and there are other things like they want to create the longest zip line in America for you to dive and uh, trekking trails, mountain biking trails and uh, various other things. We can send you an email on that if you want. And uh, various things to draw people so that they can… they have… there is a sports center coming up of tennis, this, that, whatever else. Uh, for local people to participate and also children to come and spend time in summers and other things to train for specific sports. All this coming up and uh, you must participate. As I said, I don't have any political power nor any great financial resource. All I have is a million hands, your Samsung. <laughs> the… Uh, this is the problem with me. Whether you like it or don't like it, I made you mine. I didn't ask your permission, I just made you mine. So, uh, <laughs> so naturally I expect you also slog like me. There are many things to be done. Please uh, let's know in what way you like to participate and above all, please plan your life in a sensible manner, not endless concerns, that's not the way. Consciousness, not concern, is the way to live. That's what this place is dedicated for, part of the conscious planet movement, that we create a conscious city. This doesn't mean everybody here is going to be perfect, but they will be striving, that's all that matters to me. I don't care whether you're perfect or not, but you're striving to be better, that's all. Hmm? I think the time is up, it's eight o'clock, I was supposed to close. <laughs>